This video was suggested by TLDR viewers in the topic suggestion form. The link to the form is in the description of every video, so whenever you think of a good idea, be sure to chuck it our way. In our videos, we fairly often look at specific parties operating in specific European countries. What we often don't do is look at parties that operate across the European continent. So today we're going to take a look at Volt, a pan-European political party. The question is, are they aiming too high? Is it possible to form a government in multiple countries? Well, to answer this, we need to first understand exactly what Volt stands for. Volt parties tend to support policies that can be enacted across national borders, with them claiming that national parties are reaching their limits. As the world is getting more globalised, they argue that the solutions need to transcend national borders, and nowhere is this more clear than when it comes to policies surrounding climate change. Firstly, they want to introduce an EU-wide carbon tax, designed to stop people from using carbon-intensive products. Linked to this, they also want to stop subsidies on fossil fuels and increase the energy saving targets from 30 to 40%. And this strategy of every country doing their bit and working together towards a common aim can be seen throughout their manifesto. For example, on migration. They want to reform the way that the EU deals with asylum seekers and migrants coming from outside the EU. This would be aimed at ensuring that more countries took on more asylum seekers, as they claim that a small handful have been taking the vast majority. Alongside this, they also want to increase and improve legal pathways into Europe. And all of these policies are designed to work only at a European level, so it's clear by reading their manifesto that they're aiming to make a federal Europe one that has a more powerful central government, capable of compelling constituent nations to abide by the rules they traditionally set themselves. Nowhere is this more clear than their commitment to create the position of a European Prime Minister, a figure that will be accountable to the European Parliament. But however, there are other policies that we would expect from more traditional parties, who aim to just be elected in a single country. And these policies show them as a very socially liberal party. For example, they want to legalise sex work, they want to legalise euthanasia, and they want to look into the alternatives for prisons, as well as prioritising other sanctions. They also advocate for a digital revolution, with policies committed to making more paperless administration systems, expanding the Estonian model of e-government, and expanding e-healthcare systems. So that's a quick overview of what Volt stand for, and before anyone leaves a comment about how we've missed a fundamental policy of Volt, please consider that this is a 10 minute video, and their manifesto is 217 pages long. Now let's move on to whether they've had any successes yet. Well, Volt is actually only 4 years old, having been founded on the 29th of March 2017, which just happens to be the day that the UK formally triggered Article 50 and started the Brexit process. Nonetheless, they've already had some electoral successes. For example, they've won three seats in the 2021 Dutch general election. According to one report, Volt was successful due to last-minute politicisation of European integration. And interestingly, polls show that Volt did best with highly educated Dutch voters, specifically within the 18-34-year-old to 34 year old bracket. Volt has also elected one member in the European Parliament, and this came in the 2019 European Parliamentary Elections in Germany. Volt's elected member, Damien Bosselage, was at the top of Volt's list, and as they passed the threshold, he became their representative in Brussels. In fact, although there are no other Volters in the national German government, there are a number in various councils across the country. So, despite being so new, they have had some electoral success. But a question that's likely burning in your mind is could Volt or some other pan-European party actually end up forming a government across national borders? In essence, are we about to see a Spanish and Portuguese MP become one and the same person? Well, to put it bluntly, no. And that's because, legally speaking, Volt in Spain is a completely different legal entity to Volt in Italy, which in turn is a different entity from Volt in the UK. So while they sit under the same umbrella and brand name, there are clearly some differences. It's also worth distinguishing the difference between the likes of Volt as a pan-European political party 
and political parties at the European level, known more informally as Europarties. Europarties are the respective groupings of domestic political parties in the EU and broadly have three levels – national constituent member parties, a transnational party organisation and then a political grouping within the European Parliament. Take for example the European People's Party. The EPP is currently the EU's largest political grouping, holding 178 seats in the European Parliament. Yet, when EU citizens went to the polls back in 2019, they didn't vote directly for the EPP, nor EPP candidates. Despite having its own leader, policies and manifesto, they were not directly elected. Instead, people voted for domestic political parties and politicians whose MEPs sit in the European Parliament under the EPP banner. To illustrate this point, let's take a look at one of the best-known MEPs, Nigel Farage. In 2014, Farage retained his seat in the European Parliament, but when voters in the southeast of England's seat voted him in, they did so as a UKIP member. However, when Farage sat in the European Parliament, he sat as an EFDD member, as the UKIP party were a member of the Europe of Freedom and Direct Democracy Euro Party all while retaining his UKIP domestic credentials and while being able to defect from the EFDD. In essence, these Euro parties are governing alliances. Different parties sit under the same umbrella and the same name, yet each retain their individual autonomy and colours. So, having explained that, let's turn back to actual pan-European political parties. Because these pan-European parties are radically different in that they are far, far more than just a grouping of pre-existing political parties. In a very simplistic view of things, while Euro parties are bottom-up affairs, these pan-European political parties are top-down. The umbrella comes first and then leads to the creation of individual sub-parties for each member state. Therefore, pan-European parties are far more centralised at the European level, looking at issues through less of a country-specific lens and more of a transnational European one. Looking directly at Volt's policies on climate change, we can see this in action, with, as we mentioned, them pursuing an EU-wide carbon tax to be used alongside EU-wide projects and initiatives. And speaking more broadly, there certainly are a number of issues that transcend national borders, most notably for Europe being that of migration. As we've covered in a number of videos on this channel, Europe continues to face a migration crisis, with thousands making or attempting to make the treacherous journey to European soil. On paper, the EU has a policy to handle it, targeting and shutting down the routes and relocating refugees throughout European member states. The issue being that this plan hasn't turned out as expected, with many southern European countries such as Italy, Greece and Spain all facing a disproportionate burden when it comes to handling the influx. In turn, the argument goes that the only way of truly dealing with this issue is on the European level, not just through political wranglings between French and German MEPs, but by a more European-wide, European-led group. Or at least that's how the theory goes. In any case, Volt isn't alone on the pan-European stage. Democracy in Europe movement 2025, a pan-European party set up by the Greek finance minister during the height of the sovereign debt crisis, similarly campaigns on a Europe-wide level, pushing for a European New Deal, advancements in tech sovereignty, and a separate Green New Deal for Europe. If you'd like us to make a separate video on DIEM25, then let us know in the comments below. Anyway, both DIEM25 and Volt are of the opinion that certain issues facing Europe and the world can only be solved on the transnational stage, with transnationalisation not only being the only way to overcome the obstacle of national interests blocking major reforms, but the only way to save the EU itself. But do you agree? Are pan-European parties such as Volt the way forward? Do they present a new and radical way to tackle issues? And crucially, are they truly the only way to save the EU as a whole? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.